The Arena Chapel stands near the Roman Arena in Padua. In 1300, Enrico degli Scrovegni bought the site to build a family palazzo. Giotto's frescoes in the adjoining chapel were painted in the period 1303 to 1305. After changing hands various times through inheritance, the palazzo was bought in the 16th century by the Foscari Gradenigo family, who undertook a radical program of alterations. Changes in taste also affected the chapel, whose facade was decorated with frescoes in the 18th century. They can still be seen in this photograph of 1865. Once directly linked with the chapel, the palazzo became increasingly run down and was ultimately abandoned. Demolition work on the structure began in 1827. The chapel facade once had a three-arch portico, complete with terrace and balustrade. This was cited in documents as early as 1421, but would collapse in 1817, causing severe damage to the walls and internal frescoes. At that point, the city council intervened, ordering urgent conservation work. This was the first time the public authorities in Padua had issued a ruling regarding a privately owned building that was recognized as of artistic importance to the community as a whole. The chapel was still private property when under Giovan Battista Cavalcaselle, an overall plan of restoration was drawn up. The main aim of the intervention proposed was to reduce the damp that threatened the structure and frescoes. Ten years later, in 1867, the City Council set up a special committee, headed by the architect and art critic Pietro Selvatico, to carry out tests to identify the best ways of protecting the walls and frescoes. The first analytical account of the chapel in pictures and drawings dates from 1871, when 12 very detailed watercolour studies were produced by Gabriele Benvenisti, Vincenzo Grasselli and Barnaba Lava. These plates are of extraordinary importance as a record of the state of the monument at that time. The first restoration of the frescoes was carried out by the Pisa-born Guglielmo Botti in the years 1869 to 1871. He worked on the vast Last Judgment on the counter facade, which had been seriously damaged by water leaking through cracks in the external wall. Some parts of the fresco no longer adhered to the wall. To avoid the risk of these falling and smashing, Botti removed them entirely and set them back in place after the mortar beneath had been restored. In 1880, Padua City Council acquired the arena site for the sum of 55,000 lire and was then able to guarantee full protection of the chapel. Appointed to carry out new restoration work, the Padua-born Antonio Bertolli carried out further studies of the deterioration in the frescoes. In intervening upon them, he used what were then avant-garde techniques, which were, however, rather invasive. Thousands of nails were inserted to anchor the frescoes to the walls, and in 1891 to 1892, two entire scenes were removed, Christ Amongst the Doctors and The Road to Cavalry. By the end of the 19th century, there were serious causes for concern. Cracks had appeared in the roof vault, and there was repeated flooding in the space beneath the chapel. Led by the architect Eugenio Maestri, a new overall campaign to restore the walls got underway. Removal of the mortar on the external walls made it possible to determine the actual state of the structure, and attention was also focused on the surrounding area.
Archaeological excavations of the site of the Roman arena began, continuing into the first decade of the next century. In the first half of the 20th century, another cause for concern was the damage that might be caused by war. As the First World War loomed, special temporary protection was installed, including mattresses that had been stuffed with seaweed. During the Second World War, eight new walls had to be built to bear up the vault of the crypt. These counteracted the weight of the thick layer of sand packed onto the floor of the chapel in order to minimize the effects of any possible explosion. There was also the radical proposal to remove all the frescoes. Thanks in part to the intervention of Cesare Brandi, this measure was limited to the tondi in the vault which depict the Virgin and Prophets. Contemporary films show the complex operation of detaching the frescoes. Allora, come per alcuni riquadri della volta della cappella degli Scrovegni a Padova, opera di Giotto, quando particolari condizioni di ambiente lo consigliavano e lo consentivano, alcuni affreschi vennero addirittura staccati dal muro, con procedimenti che indubbiamente presentano notevoli difficoltà, ma per i quali i nostri tecnici hanno una straordinaria perizia. In 1944, further plans were drawn up for the comprehensive protection of the structure. One of these involved the construction of a massive arched shell in reinforced concrete to contain the entire building. Another involved the creation of a more articulated containment structure. The foundations and some of the base walls for this were actually built, but the project was then abandoned due to lack of resources. After the war, studies of the chapel resumed. One goal was a better understanding of the dynamics in the relationship between the building itself and its hydrogeological environment. The site, in fact, is made up of alluvial deposits left by the rivers Brenta and Bacchiglione. and it is crossed by two underground aquifers. The higher of these actually reaches up to the floor of the room beneath the chapel, and its level varies according to rainfall and the volume of water in the nearby Piovico Canal. The water level is constantly monitored and regulated by a system of pumps. Alongside these studies, there were measures to make good some lesions in the walls, and Mauro Pelliccioli worked on restoration of parts of the frescoes in 1952.
Ten years later, in 1962, a complex program of conservation got underway. This work intervened in an irreversible manner on certain characteristics of the building and its structural behaviour. For example, the wooden roof structure was replaced with one of metal components, a perimeter bond beam in reinforced concrete was added, and new tie rods were installed. Following overall restoration of the frescoes, carried out by Leonetto Tintori, the chapel reopened to the public in 1963. After an earthquake in 1976 had worsened the cracks in the vault, the need for a thorough survey of the structure became clear. This would then open the way to a detailed campaign of interventions based upon the most up-to-date technologies. In 1982, the Ministry of Cultural Affairs published a monograph issue of its Bollettino d'Arte that was entirely dedicated to the results of the studies carried out at the chapel since 1977. These had consisted primarily in monitoring of the microclimate within and around the structure, identification of the types and levels of chemical and biological pollution, and analyses of the painted surface of the frescoes, at the time, it was laid down that the entire area should be overhauled and a regular program of maintenance introduced, all to be overseen by a scientific technical committee set up by Padua City Council. The main cause of deterioration was atmospheric pollution. Interacting with the damp environment, this triggered the process of sulfation, which transformed lime, the main ingredient in the plaster surface beneath the frescoes, into chalk, with the result that the paint crumbled away. It was therefore necessary to reduce the admission of pollutants to a minimum. Measures also had to be taken to prevent the formation of water vapour within the building, which could cause further deterioration. In 1994, the committee was revised to include representatives of the City Museum Authority, the relevant departments in the City Council, superintendents responsible for the cultural heritage, the Central Institute for Restoration, the City's university and expert consultants. Its task was to define the methods to be used and the protocols of monitoring to be adopted. It was also responsible for establishing the priorities to be respected when coordinating work. The whole approach was now one of planned conservation rather than urgent response to an emergency. The entire system of access to the structure was redesigned to create a stable microclimate within the building. A special air conditioning system guaranteed the controlled admission and extraction of improved quality air. Thus, in the years 1998 to 2002, the advanced technological facility was created and installed. A Memorandum of Understanding, signed in 2000 by both Padua City Council and the Ministry of Cultural Affairs and Heritage, initiated a project for the full restoration of Giotto's cycle of frescoes to be overseen by the Central Institute for Restoration. Work began in April 2001 and ended in 2002. The first phase involved consolidation of the underlying plaster and the painted surface. This was followed by reversible work to restore the visual integrity of very badly degraded sections. In addition, there was restoration of the works here by Giovanni Pisano, a great sculptor of the International Gothic School, as well as the monumental tomb and full-length sculptural portrait of Enrico Scrovegni, the latter complete with some of its original polychrome. The ambons, the old wooden furnishings and the floor also underwent restoration. 
Since then, the fresco's state of conservation has been fully monitored each year, with the cycle also undergoing regular maintenance. In February 2015, funding was made available for a two-year interdisciplinary project overseen by the University of Padua. The integrated methods of study used were all designed to be non-invasive. Studies have revealed that none of the parameters currently being monitored are at levels that warrant the introduction of measures to supplement this regular maintenance. The present committee follows in the footsteps of its predecessors, promoting periodic initiatives for scientific discussion and the exchange of data. This extensive synergy of forces would, in 2018, result in two technically demanding projects. The first of these, undertaken by the Ministry of Cultural Activities and Heritage, aimed to restore the underground space and its decorations. The goal was to achieve an efficient system for monitoring the levels of water that might seep into the building without taking any measures that might undermine the stability of the existing situation. The second project, undertaken by the City Council, focused on the repair and maintenance of the roofing. Tackling issues that affect the behaviour of the structure as a whole, this involved replacement of large perforated brick blocks with hard-wearing panels of marine multiply, causing no redistribution of weight but providing heightened rigidity in the roofing, these changes have enhanced the structural performance of the chapel as a whole, particularly in the event of an earthquake. The studies carried out in the preliminary phase also cast light on the relation between the construction of the chapel and the archaeological remains on the site. Above all, however, they led to the updating of plant systems and monitoring equipment, thus making it easier to measure and control the effects of exceptional hydrogeological events. A positive example of integrated conservation and preservation the Arena Chapel is one of the most prestigious cultural achievements of a city, which in the 14th century became the European capital of large-scale fresco painting. The extraordinary artistic and historical legacy that period has left in Padua is without question a heritage of universal significance.